everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today I'm going to be doing a review video. I got some uh, books from Union Square Press and since I've read them all this month and everything I thought I might as well just do like a review of Union Square Press books in one and, <laughs> and everything so that's what I'm deciding to do. Sorry about the ring light, but it is overcast, kind of getting ready to rain type of day, and so yeah, it was dark in here. So uh, anyway, I'm just going to get started with them. I've got them pretty much from uh, like the ones that I gave three stars to down to the one that I gave four stars to, and we'll just kind of go in that order. And so I have... Nothing ever hap nothing interesting ever happens to Ethan Fairmont by Nick Brooks. And this book is about uh Ethan who um the only friend that he really had uh kind of uh quit talking to him and when he moved away and now he's like friends with the guys that bully him and so he kind of thinks of him as a traitor and all that stuff. And there's a new kid in town but he doesn't really want to try to make any friends though his mom wants him to. And, uh, he's also very, very smart. Um, he's very good with electronics. He, uh, is working on a vacuum robot. He's working on it to try to help their neighbor who needs some help and assistance around the house and everything. So, he's very smart and just kind of alone. And he was, um, going to his little junkyard place that he usually gets some of his stuff that he uh, works with and everything and the new kid starts following him around and so he meets the new kid whether he wants to or not but um one of the times when he was there they got scared first because they thought there was something creepy in there and then they went back or at least he went back but juan carlos ended up coming with him or finding him because well the bullies were chasing after him and so they end up meeting up back up with kareem who is um, the kid that was his friend that he calls a traitor and he's not working, not wanting to be friends with anymore. Um, but because of how the other kids were treating them, he didn't really like it. I mean, he was, he's a, he's a good kid. He just, you know, he made friends with the bad kids because he's having a hard time and you find out about like what's going on with him. But anyway, all three of them are together when they discover, um, this little alien in the, like, junkyard lot or whatever it is and so Ethan wants to do whatever he can to protect it from um, some people that he sees in town that are wanting um, the alien and he's trying to figure out what to feed him and like try to get him back home because he he understands how he feels being sad and lonely and wanting to get back home and all that kind of stuff and so that's pretty much what this is about it has some other things in it some I, I'm not really big on things that have like social commentary and stuff like that in it, so I think other people will probably like this a little bit more than I did. There's just some things in it that I was just like, eh, and everything. But other than that, it was it wasn't a bad book. I give it three stars, which is still decent. Um, I would uh, read something else by Nick Brooks. This is the first time I've read this, and like I said, I I think a lot of other people will enjoy this. I would call it. Um, sci-fi contemporary because <laughs> I mean it's like contemporary with like a tiny bit of a sci-fi element because you have like the little alien but other than that it was more of a, a realistic contemporary setting with an alien but yeah so there's that one then the other one I have is uh, Wait For Me by Sarah Shepard and this one I think I would have just liked it more if I would have liked the trope that was in here, but because I don't really care for past life type uh, settings that it just didn't really work for me, so I do believe this one would work for others. Um, Sarah Shepard, as probably pretty much everybody knows, is the author of The Pretty Little Liars, and though I've never read those, I have read her, um, her other series that she has. I can't remember what it's called. You know, it has, like, If Two Can Keep a Secret and Never Have I Ever. I don't know if that's a series. But anyway, I've read a series of hers. And so I, I like her writing, and her write, the writing was fine. But this is about Casey, who um, 
She likes to kind of dress up in like different outfits and kind of be different people and everything. But she has started to have these like voices in her head. And she has like a really um, prestigious boyfriend and everything. And she's just kind of like, you know, like what she would call herself kind of more of a bottom rung. And he's like way up here because he's like super rich. She doesn't really know why he wants to hang out with her. And he takes her to, like, this big fancy uh, dinner ball thing or whatever. And while they're dancing, she has these uh, this voice in her head. And I think it was something like, um, you've been a bad girl or something like that. She thinks Marcus said it, but Marcus is, like, looking at her like, what are you talking about? What are you, you know, he doesn't have a clue why she's acting like the way she's acting. And um, so she keeps having these... Uh, voices in her head and some weird dream like visions and so she ends up taking off and going to Avon Shores because um, that is some place that she thinks she needs to go try to clear her head do some studying because she is in college she's um she's really smart and so like she's in college uh, ahead of her time kind of and everything so she just wants to get away and study and she tells Marcus that she is going somewhere else to study when she's actually going to this place. And when she gets to Avon Shore, she meets this guy named Jake, I believe, who she thinks is this guy in her head or whatever. She thinks his name is Will or like he's a past life Will or something because of some of the things that he says. And so he, th she thinks that she has met him before, but she doesn't remember ever meeting him before. So she thinks it must be like in a past life type thing and so you, you've got all that but you also there is a mystery because the people from the past they died in a car accident when Will was at the driver's seat and he they were escaping from something and I won't say what but they anyway they, he, they was driving and kind of fast trying to get away and they end up in a lake I believe it is and they both drowned and so this is kind of like a mystery trying to figure out what happened to the people in the past while Casey's trying to figure out what in the world's going on with herself and uh, who she's supposed to be with this Marcus or this Jake or whatever it kind of a thing which I'm pretty sure it will interest other people a lot more than me I I thought it was okay and I give it three stars but um, I just I'm not a fan of past life things so take that with a grain of salt I think people will enjoy it then I have Avon Green Soccer Machine and recently I reviewed the first three books in this series and this is the newest one that comes out, I believe it comes out in April. And uh, this is about Avon Green, who, as you can see there, was born with no arms. And she has learned to um, do just about anything. In the first book, she was being a sleuthing uh, machine. In the second book, she was learning how to bake. In the third book, she was uh, learning how to play a mu uh, musical instrument. And in this one, she's playing soccer. And my, I'm pretty sure that there is a learning element in here because Avon learns things. But she gets on my nerves a little bit. And I'm sure it's supposed to be there to uh, for kids to learn from Avon. But I would have thought she would have learned teamwork and things like that back in Avon Green Baking Machine. Because she hurt her friend's feelings back then because... She uh, pretty much wanted to do whatever she wanted and all that stuff. So I thought she would learn her lesson a little bit. So she kind of aggravated me a tiny bit in this one. Because um, there's a, they're on a soccer team. They, Her and her friends and um, I think another, another one, maybe another couple, but that aren't like actual friends that are in the other books. But um, one of them is... Uh, I can't remember her name. But she wasn't playing soccer, but they invited her to come and, like, join the soccer team. And so there's a couple of new ones on the soccer team. And, uh, I can't remember. Why can I never remember people's names? Um, I think her name is, oh, Sujata is the one that's new to the team that's her friend. 
and Kayla, okay, Kayla was, Kayla takes it upon herself to, like, help the new kids that are, you know, new soccer players or whatever and stuff, but Avon doesn't want to show any of them her soccer tricks because she's the best player on the team and she doesn't want anybody else being the best player and her dad's the soccer coach and he has decided that since they have done fairly well with their team and everything now it's time for them to have a captain well she thinks because she's like the best one on the team that she's going to be the captain and he tries to explain to her like and to them what's the role of captains and she takes it in a different direction which was kind of annoying and uh while you know a captain is supposed to be encouraging and things like that and he tries to teach her like you know and then what the word encouraging actually means and stuff but yeah um avon doesn't think of it the way it's supposed to be and stuff so it was cute, uh, but I think I, I liked I liked the music machine. I think is my favorite one out of all of them. But I do give this one three point five stars. I mean, it was okay. I do like that it has um, like a glossary in the back, so that if there are some terms in here that you know the kids might not know, they can look them up. Um, like it has faint in here, but it's not like faint as in like faint dead away. It's to confuse with instantly going. It's not to be confused with instantly going to sleep and falling to the ground. It says C flip flap up here, which is a move used to fool a defense player into thinking that the uh, offensive player is going to move in a direction that they don't intend to. So they, they faint, you know, or whatever. So, and it's got other words in here. It's got a few others. There's sportsmanship and things like that. So it, it, it's a good learning book for kids. And everything and so like I, I'm pretty sure that kids are supposed to learn not to do things the way that Avon Green does things but I would just hope that she kind of learns her lesson in this one and starts to learn how to be a better team player with her friends and stuff like that but overall it was cute it has some pictures in it which are are cute too I got, got like little illustrations and everything And then the last one that I have is a Rare Birds by Jeff Miller. And let me tell you, this is the reason I don't really care to read middle grade contemporary books. Because most of the time they're going to make me cry. <laughs> and so I wasn't really sure about what I was going to think of this one. But this one is about, and I should know this because I just read this not that long ago. Graham. Okay, yeah. So this is about uh, Graham, and um, his mother is sick. She needs a new heart, and they have been places here and there. He spent most of his uh, time growing up in a uh, the waiting room. He calls it the waiting room and stuff. And sometimes he'll float off into like another place where he's in a different kind of waiting room or whatever. And, um, it's just, you know, always there because of his mom and her heart condition and stuff. Well, they have a chance to go to Florida because she's going to be put on the heart transplant list there. And so they're going to be moving there. And she has a friend that she, because she's from there, she has a friend that she has known from there. And I think his name was Don. And anyway, he's going to put them up in his house and everything and she doesn't tell him at first that um he has a, a young boy too that's about his age and they don't really get along at first because well nick ends up having to share his room with graham so yeah that's you know but nick has ha has his problems too and you learn a lot about that too why he's kind of kind of a little bit of a bully and things but yeah, so they're there, and the the reason they're there is, like I said, for her to get like on the heart transplant list and hopefully to get into it. And um, while he's in the waiting room, while um, she's being examined and everything, he meets a young girl whose name I cannot remember either. I don't know if it says. I think it's Lou. I think. Yeah, it's Lou. Sometimes I can, it just comes to me. <laughs> so, um, 
Uh, her name is Lou, and she spent a lot of her time in the waiting room because her dad is there. And um, so they kind of form a bond, and they hang out. Well, uh, Graham finds out from his mother that she used to be a birder, and she used to go around and, and find these birds. Well, there's this rare bird, and it's called a snail kite. But she never got a glimpse of the snail kite. She never got to write it down in her birder book. And so... Um, the worse that she starts to get and things like that, the more uh, Graham tries to find this bird. There's also a contest where they could win some money. And it's just for kids. Kind of get them out there to do the birding and stuff like that. And uh, so him and Lou kind of team up together and everything. The only uh, like downside to this is how sad like it was at the end. And it's probably not for the reasons that you might even think that I'm saying now because I can't say anything else because, you know, that may be spoiling. But it, it was really sad. <laughs> and so just know that going into it is really sad in the end. But, um, I think that my only downside I have to this, besides the crying, is that, um, it was kind of weird that, uh, they just let the kids roam around in like the swamp area in a boat where there's alligators and stuff. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's just Florida. I don't know. Maybe because they've grown up around that they're supposed to be used to it or whatever and that's no big deal. But because I mean, they're like, you need to take the, uh, the boat out into the, you know, kind of like the lake or swamp or whatever it was where they were at to, to uh, find the bird a little bit better because it might have been out there or whatever. And there is a... And, a scary little incident in here with a, a gator. So <laughs> I'm like, that's just kind of weird that, you know, it's just okay to let your kid just go willy nilly and stuff like that. But um, other than that, uh, I, I really, actually, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I'm not a huge contemporary person, um, but the writing is really nice. Um, I, I really, I liked what it was about. It didn't like uh, bore me or anything like that for being contemporary. Uh, it did keep my interest. I was kind of curious how it was going to go. It's not like because it made me cry. But <laughs> this one, out of all the other ones that um, I would have thought maybe I would have liked more, I gave this one four stars. So <laughs> I liked this one better than the other ones. And yeah, so I think if you like contemporaries like this and everything, you don't even have to be like into birds or anything like that. Um, it's really just a story about two kids, you know, trying to find this bird before, you know, something bad might happen to like his mother and all that kind of stuff. And it was cute. And so that's the four books that I got from Union Square Press. And I would like to say thank you to Union Square for sending me these four books to review. I appreciate it every time I get books and everything. So um, has anybody else read any of these books? Please let me know what you thought about them down in the comment. Or if I explain them well enough that you think one of them might be something you would like to read, let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you all next video. Bye.